Okay, so there's a couple things at the same time. So there's the imposter syndrome of, I'm not gonna be good enough, okay? And, and I'm, I'm not gonna be able to add value. And so that is fear, right? Um, those are thoughts and feelings. And so one of the most effective things that you can do as an entrepreneur is trade those for data. The same way we talked about serving the outcome through objectivity, so as an example, um, you have to have customers actually get disappointed in you for it to be a problem. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I don't have any reason to think that someone actually is going to be upset Correct. about it. One of the biggest things that entrepreneurs um, do is, so entrepreneurs have short uh, attention spans and they, they, they have a lot of risk and fear and they don't have a lot of data when they're starting out. So what that means is, is that they'll have a theory around what they need to do, and then they'll go try to do some stuff to get, the, to get their business going, and it won't go really fast, and they won't get a ton of response. And so out of fear, they'll go, I need to change my product. Um, and then, they'll, and then they will continue to iterate their product instead of going out and doing what we call collecting no's. Like out of fear, changing the product rather than going out and selling the crap out of it and then getting people tell you, I don't want this because of X. Um, and so understanding what it is about the product. Okay. One of the most important things you can do is as an entrepreneur, you have to create your theory as to what will add value and you have to trust your instincts. And so there is a big difference between when your gut says, oh my God, this is a good thing. Versus when you say, I have to change something out of fear. Yeah. Big difference. And over time, you'll be able to delineate between the two because it's not an intellectual process. It's literally the feelings will, will, will present at a different place in your body. It'll feel okay. different. And, and unfortunately, the only way you can fine tune, because people will be like, oh, as an entrepreneur, you just have to go with your gut. Like, well, yes, but this is something that you just have to do trial and error. And so you as an entrepreneur, you're going to have a gut instinct where you don't need data. But in addition to that, you want the market to tell you what your opportunities and your challenges are as much as you can. Use your gut <clears throat> and your creativity to create your minimal viable product and then make your energy about um, finding a way to get it in front of as many people as possible um, rather than um, getting it in front of one person and then, ha and then over responding to one set of feedback. So there's a, there's a, a, a healthcare SaaS company that I'm on the board of and, um, they're, they're at like 3 million revenue. They got all these customers and the, the sales director in a coaching session with me is like, I want to change the pricing structure because people aren't going from 20% of physicians using our product to hundred percent. I'm like, well, so what are your customers saying as to why they aren't? And he keeps explaining why he thinks the new pricing structure will drive adoption. And I'm, and I'm telling him like, dude, you are in a fucking lab right now with a pen making a guess. And the difference between you and an entrepreneur that's just starting out is you actually have the install base. You actually have the customers where you could go ask them. Every time yeah. I was going to create a new product, I would go interview 10 of my customers and I would get their feedback. I would, I would determine what my questions were. <clears throat> And I would, I would say, I'm going to do this for like five people or 10 people. And I would ask the same questions no matter what, because what I'm going to want to do after the second interview is respond to the feedback and I'm going to want to change, but I need an adequate data set to be able to make that change. And so he has that. Now, if you don't have the customers, you can still go interview people, right? People that are in your potential customer, but you know, in your sweet spot, Hopefully people that are going to be less likely to be biased, right? And say, I love you, Caroline. So whatever you want. Um, <laughs> ask them. And so even right now, as you deal with your customers that you're actually going and doing work with, you could be asking them questions to formulate a theory on what you need to do to optimize your business and then see what their answers are. But also just remember that the best answer is the answer that happens with action, not one that happens verbally. Mm. saying that customers vote with their with their wallets better than their mouths right so what right. they actually buy matters so that's like the high level entrepreneur thing so i just threw a lot at you what i would do if i were you is i would just say 
as you think about what you need to do for your business or not, mm -hmm. I would want to think about how can I use my customers or my potential customers as objective ways of crowdsourcing whether or not my hypothesis is true. To the degree that you're able to think about it as your expertise comes from your ownership of becoming better at the process and less about the output and the input, it'll mm. give you the confidence to take more challenging inputs and it'll give you less pressure to deliver what you think are better outputs because it's, it's not a way to absolve yourself of responsibility. It's a way to honor the fact that you aren't God.